Hello everyone and welcome to a coffee break talk on the colourful cacti of northern Argentina. Now many of the cacti I'm going to show you today are truly alpines growing at altitudes of between 2,000 and 4,000 metres in the northwest of Argentina. Looking at this map we're going to be entirely in the high regions which are coloured yellow or brown from Chilicito in the south, traveling north through Fiambala, Cafayate, and up to the Bolivian border near Purmamaca. Now, in case you're not familiar with the structure of a cactus, I thought we'd just have a little look. The main body of the cactus is called the stem, and on that there are ribs and areoles. Uh, the areoles are a small area bearing hairs or spines. Now spines, of course, are modified leaves. And then on the top of, of the plant, uh, you have the calyx. That's the reproductive part of the plant which bears the flower. And in time, of course, the seeds. Sometimes these flowers actually occur on the stem as well. One of the first cacti that we came across as we were travelling west from Cordoba was Gymnocolisium bruchii, and that was actually growing near Los Gigantes, which you may have noticed on the title slide. This is in the central Sierras, and the highest peaks, as you saw in Los Gigantes, are between 2,100 and 2,400 metres. Then as we progressed further west, we came across a Puntia sulfuria, and this is quite widespread in northern Argentina and Bolivia. Uh, it's low growing and a sort of spreading or erect shrub, which can form broad clumps, anything up to two metres in diameter, but only about 40 centimetres tall. And it's got dense, stiff spines and bright yellow flowers. A very different kind of a Puntia, though, is a Puntia chimilo known as the prickly pear. And this is a gynodioecious plant, which means it bears female flowers on one plant and hermaphrodite flowers on a different plant. And the flowers, of course, are bright orange. But some cacti look very different indeed. In fact, they look like trees, as does Stetsonia corin. And it really is like a tree. It can grow to 10 meters in height, it does have pink tinted white flowers in the season and these short trunks which can bear up to a hundred branches. It's also covered in fierce spines which gives it the common name of the toothpick cactus. And growing round about it in that sort of soil was a funny little cactus called Tephracactus articulatus subspecies inermis and this has knobbly potato-shaped stem segments. When it's in flower, it does have pretty white bell-shaped flowers with a yellow centre, and it makes sort of low sprawling map. And it doesn't have spines because that is what inermis means, without spines. However, a cactus that does have spines is Echinopsis leucantha. And this is a cylindrical cactus. It has 10 to 14 ribs, and curved spines and these beautiful white flowers. Now another very tall, almost tree-like cactus is Trichocereus terschecii, and it's quite an interesting cactus. It grows on different soil types in grasslands and in the semi-arid Chaco forest, which basically has a rainfall of about 400 to 750 millimeters a year. It can grow in quite thick stands, and they again can reach, like Stetsonia corin, about 10 metres in height. It's branched and it's quite woody. In fact, it's harvested for its wood. Its tops, though, need to exceed the surrounding vegetation in order to survive. And these stems, which on the pictures look pretty broad, are indeed 45 centimetres or more in diameter. The beautiful flowers which you see large and white and bell-shaped or even funnel form are actually born and come out at night which means that it's pollinated by bats and the cactus 
is so tough and woody that woodpeckers bore into it searching for insects. And that's what the hole is in the middle of the central image. Now, the upper elevation or the upper altitude to which this cactus grows is limited by cold and decreasing rainfall. And this cactus, which is very similar, known as Trichocereus pasacana, is limited by heat and increasing rainfall. Now, the dividing line is said to be about 2,000 metres. So basically, if it's below 2,000 metres, it's Trichocereus tershekii. If it's above, it's Trichocereus atacarmensis subspecies pasacana. A very different Trichocereus, though, was this, much, much smaller, but very, very spectacular, with huge white trumpets. And again, like the other Trichocereus, it flowers at night. Fortunately, though, for botanists and photographers, they do tend to hold their flowers into at least the following morning. And we actually found a very good yellow flowered form as well. Now, the plants tend with age to lean to one side so that the pups, as the young ones are called, form on the other side. And it may also hybridize with another cactus, Lobivia huashka, which again is very showy. And this is quite widespread in northern Argentina. It's a cylindrical cactus again with stout light green stems. And these very showy flowers, they can also come in red as well. Now, a completely different cactus is Tephracactus geometricus. And you can see the kind of terrain in which it grows. And in many ways, this little funny little cactus really is very well camouflaged. It's very difficult to spot until you get your eye in because a lot of the rocks are this pinkish colour, just like the cactus. It has globular lobes and as you can see, very few spines. And in the spring, it bears pale pink or white flowers, so it matches the uh, the colour of the stems. This is actually a very dainty little cactus. In real life, it only grows to about four centimetres high. The buds, as you can see, though, are a beautiful dark pink on the backs of the petals, which then open to give these lovely bell-shaped flowers again. The edges of the petals are tinged with pink. Now, this is a very different cactus again. It also doesn't perhaps grow where you'd expect to find a cactus because this loves to grow in the Jungus forest. The Jungus forest these days only exists in deep ravines in northern Argentina where you're really in cloud forest. So you get moisture, dampness, rain all year round, virtually every day. So this is very different. In fact, you can see drops of water on the spines uh, of this particular cactus. But it's quite sort of spectacular because it has these tubular pink flowers with brilliant emerald green and cream tips. And it can actually grow to a height of about one and a half meters and then spread about six meters. And the reason it spreads is perhaps shown by these images, or the right-hand image of this Cleister cactus, different species, Balmanii, because really what it does is it grows up, then bends down, and then roots again, and then throws up another stem. So that is how it spreads, and it can cover quite some distance. Again, though, this Cleister cactus has these bright pink, perhaps more orangey coloured tubular flowers. This is another very spectacular cactus, Cereus forbsii. It grows to about two meters in height and it's branched and a bit tree-like, but much smaller than the, the real tree-like cactus that we've seen earlier. It has these blue-green cylindrical columnar stems armed with long spines. And it's endemic, not just to Argentina, but also Bolivia and Paraguay. The people who live in this part of Argentina 
I think are very fond of their cacti. They make lovely carvings out of the Trichocereus because it's so woody. And as you can see, uh, this is just a couple of murals that we came across in a hotel. They also depict them in their artwork. The Trichocereus, of course, is at the back of the left-hand picture, but in the foreground you've got Sorensia bruchii. And these sort of uh, multi-ribbed stems of the cactus, they grow to about 50 centimetres in diameter. The spines are a brownish yellow, and of course the flowers, this wonderful flame colour appearing at the top of the, of the stem or the body. But it wasn't only the cactus in northern Argentina that were really colourful and spectacular. So was the scenery. And we were taken along RP68, which is one of the most beautiful roads in South America. I mean, there's just jaw-dropping scenery at every turn. And as you can see, the sunlight here, it, it, the sun is beginning to set and it's the sort of fading sunlight on the mountains. And then we reached a point where the rocks had been eroded and sculpted to such an extent that you had wonderful pinnacles formed like this, the obelisk, El Obelisco. And around the obelisk there were growing cacti and we found Gymnocolisium spegazinii, which has a flattened stem, in this case half buried in the sandy soil. And then the pale coloured radial spines are recurved around the body of the cactus and very attractively sort of add pressed against it, against the stem. On the right hand side you have a picture of another cactus that was growing there and that was Cereus Ethiops. And although it's uh, perhaps a more typical looking cactus with columnar stems, it has these dark purplish green stems and black spines. Now on a very spectacular road in the mountainous areas uh, we were driving down um, into a river valley on the hillsides as we looked up were clumps of this magnificent cactus Trichocereus smertzianus, smertzianus also known as Echinopsis chicandansii and this has a large round body with up to 10 to 15 ribs and very beautiful funnel form flowers, but they were quite variable in colour. This likes to grow in high altitude grasslands, as you can see here. And of course, in these grasslands, you also get farmsteads. So the cacti just carry on growing there. Um, and there you've got one of the white flowered forms and then a beautiful dark pink form growing around one of the fence posts. And we continued on down into the river valley where we found this absolutely stunning form of the same cactus but with these golden deep egg yolk yellow flowers which would just look sensational all clustered of course around the apex of the stem and then we continued and came to a very unprepossessing site really a blank rock wall towering up above us, on which initially at first we could see nothing. And then high up we spotted these little scarlet flowers of Rebutia senilis, which really is a very pretty little cactus. It has globular stems covered of course in white spines, but the showy flowers grow from the older areoles on the lower part of the stem. And of course if it hadn't been flowering, I mean, we would just never have spotted it at all. But we've now reached the Bolivian border. We're at a height of about 4,000 metres, and a cactus that we found growing there was Moeniopsis boliviana. It's also known as Cumulopuntia boliviana, which is really quite an appropriate name because this cactus forms large cushions, and really they resemble or thought to resemble dark spiny cumulus clouds, hence its name. 
and it's found, of course, in these high Andean deserts against the Bolivian border. And as we were looking towards Bolivia, you see the Eight Brothers of Yavi, which is what those hills are called. And there was actually a battle here in 1816, on the 15th of November. It was part of the Argentine War of Independence. Sadly, the local people lost, and the Spaniards then invaded Salta and Jujuy. Also growing in this area was a very spectacular cactus called Neowerdemanii vorvecii. We first saw Neowerdemanii in Peru, and there are only, I think, a couple of species in the genus. It is a very spiny uh, globose plant. It has white or pink flowers. They're born, of course, near the apex of the stem and have naked floral tubes. And they may have up to 20 or more stout, curved or hooked spines. Now, the right hand side shows Parodia massii. This is a small globular cactus with very long hooked spines. And when it flowers, the blooms are an orange or yellow colour. And this likes to grow in rocky outcrops in high altitude grasslands, again, certainly above 3000 metres. And we also saw it growing in this area. It was growing, in fact, near the Oreocereus troilii. And you can see that there was a storm gathering. We were near a place called Iturbi, and it did, in fact, develop into a very spectacular thunderstorm. But we managed to get our photographs before that happened. Now, Oreocereus troilii is known as the old man of the Andes. And it's a shrubby, branching columnar cactus covered in dense white woolly hairs, uh, which protect it, of course, from the night frosts and also from intense sunlight in the daytime. The central spines at the top are orange or reddish brown, and they actually protrude through the fine woolly radial spines. It branches at the base and then forms clumps of short, chunky columnar shoots that lie sideways with age. The flowers, of course, are tubular and bright pink or even violet red. But one of the most beautiful cactus, I think, was Gymnocolisium saglionis. And we're now very near the end of the talk. And this is a beautiful solitary barrel cactus, flattened, and it has long spreading rich brown spines and these funnel form pink flowers which form a crown around the plant apex and then the flowers almost have to struggle through the dense mass of spines but again you see the habitat in which it was growing amongst these very spectacular colored hills in fact where we found this was just behind a World Heritage Site, which I'm going to end with, uh, which is the Hill of Seven Colours, where indeed the rocks are stained by minerals in them to make a very spectacular landscape. So, thank you again for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the high-level cacti of northern Argentina.